All right, in this final section, what we're going to do is talk about configuration management and how to um, use that using Git and GitHub um, and specifically there. Configuration management is a, is a powerful tool. Um, it's, it's a way for you to be able to keep track of, of the changes that you've made and to be able to kind of protect yourself um, and be able to roll back and, and do all sorts of different things. So let's, let's learn about configuration management and how to use that specifically using GitHub and GitHub Desktop. So to go ahead and get us started, let's talk a little bit about what is actually is configuration management. Um, have you ever encountered, let's kind of take this back a little bit. Have you ever encountered a situation where you're working on a Word document or, or a thing and you're just you're going and everything's working just fine and all of a sudden your computer crashes and you realize you didn't save your file? Well, that modern Word applications kind of automatically do this saving and all these things for you. But this happened to me a few times, and now I'm constantly pushing that Control S button all the time to make sure I don't ever, ever run into that again. Have you ever made a mistake in a document, and then now you've had to do that Control Z a whole bunch of times, and you realize you got to go back, and you really don't like that? Or you've typed in a report and said, you start going through this paragraph, and you realize, I really don't like this. You just go back, and you take it all out. Um, or have you ever saved multiple copies of a document? and kind of had one that was this version and you kind of took it this way and, and this kind of meaning and then another one was another version and you kind of took it this different meaning and you kind of had these different ones. Well, each of these examples are actually rudimentary um, examples of configuration management. Um, you're taking different um, aspects of that. Developers make mistakes. We, we do it all the time. Um, we also like to make changes and just kind of see what happens. Um, this configuration management is is what's there to aid you as a developer to be able to accomplish um, each of those those types of different things that's there. T today we're going to learn um, kind of the the different um, aspects of what computer or what configuration management is, the different types of version control software that are out there, some common terms of, of version control such as commit, push, and pull, um, what branching and version control is. Um, what a repository is, and, and how to create it, changes to uh, GitHub repo and push those those changes, and then also how to update your repository um, based off of that. Configuration management, formally speaking, um, is the process by which changes to software is tracked and maintained. Um, the, the goal is to be able to recreate um, a version of your software at, at any time. I, I remember when I, I worked um, at my previous job uh, uh, at a subcontractor, um, we we had to work with software that was over 20 years old. And, and when you're working in the space industry, uh, you, we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier, you, you can't really make massive changes. And, and, and so we would have this kind of core software that we worked with and we'd make changes and, and different changes would be done based off of the type of hardware that was kind of sent out. But when you're working with software that's out in space, you can't change the hardware. So there's certain aspects to that. So we had to be able to support software that was over 20 years old and working up in a, in a satellite of, that was 20 years old and had to work with that. And so we had to be able to um, reliably pull up that version of the software and potentially make some changes, small changes, and then upload those changes up and, and make those changes that's in there. So that was, that was a very kind of interesting um, support that's in there. And, and configuration management allows you to do that. Um, configuration management uses a system called version control. Um, and basically what that does is it tracks the changes of the software over time. Um, version control uh, uses repositories to manage that, that state. Um, and, and a repository is a, is a system by which code and its changes are tracked. It's using metadata. Oftentimes, it's used using some sort of a database in the back end, um, um, but but it can be you know just plain metadata that's that's kind of there, um, and the changes that are that are done there. Um, at the basic level, all version control uh, software has kind of three things aspect, uh, aspects to them. You have a commit, which saves the current state of the current of the code base. You have a, a push, where you push out the changes to a central server, and then you have a pull, which pulls down the changes from that central server um, that's in there. Um, 
that some version control software might use different terms for for those they might even have some intermediary steps or they might even do some of the stuff automatically for you that's in there but in essence all version control software have kind of this commit this push and this pull that's a part of that um, there's a lot of different version control software out there. Git is kind of the most common, I would say, right now. Um, but there's SVN, there's Mercurial, there's Clearcase even. Um, and and for our course, we're going to be using a Git and GitHub repositories um, in there. So um, Git and GitHub is is a, a version control software um, or that you can use. And and um, GitHub. So Git is the source control um, software. GitHub is an online service that's kind of your central repository that's in there. And they've also got some additional web app features such as wikis and projects and issue tracking and all those types of stuff. We're, we're not going to get into a lot of the different command line tools that's on there. And, and we're not going to go into all of the details of what GitHub has to offer. We're going to just do the very basics of how do you pull down a, a repository, how do you make changes to that repository, um, and how do you push up those changes, and then how do you maybe pull down changes that have been made um, elsewhere in there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull up my GitHub repository here. So I have a repository here. Um, this is my um, my PCC CIS homework one with my username that's there. Um, and I've got this file that I created and, and made changes to um, that's in there. So you can see in my um, interface here. Let me let me actually change this so that you guys can see this a little bit better. Here, there we go. Um, on this pane right here, this is where all the files that have changed that's in there. Um, and if I pull up my my Visual Studio Code, you can see. You know, I have this random text and this hello.py. You actually see that it's green over here, and that's because Visual Studio notifies and realizes, hey, there's been some changes here. Um, so we're going to look at this, and we see, OK, this file has been added. We can see there's all this stuff that's in there. And same thing with here. This file has all been added as well. I can tell that because, A, there's a plus mark here. That means it's a new file. And also, everything in here is green. Everything in here that's green means that those are additions that's in there. So um, this is your all of your changed files pane that's in there, right there. Um, this right here shows you what changed, and you can select what happened in there. Right here is where you put a commit message that's in there. So I'm just going to type, I'm type a message in here and say initial commit. So this is my first thing in here. I'm going to commit to master, and boom, now the changes have been saved. Now it's important to note that these changes have been saved but not actually pushed to the central server. They're not on GitHub. If I pull up GitHub here and I go to my repository, right here, you can see there's nothing in here. Nothing really got changed. I just have my, my git ignore and my readme that's in there. So nothing's actually been, been changed um, in there. But it doesn't show the changes here, and that's because I have to push those changes. So up here, this button will actually automatically change, and it'll say push origin. So I'm going to push this. Going to wait, and it's going to complete. And once it gets all the way into here, you're going to see a completion there, and there it's done. Now we can go back to this. I'm going to refresh my page, and we can see changes were actually pushed into there. And we can actually look and see what those changes are. And here's a hello.py, and here those changes have been done. So that's how you push those changes that's there. Now this initial commit that's in here, um, you this commit message, you want to keep this brief. Just a, a few words to describe what's, what's going on. If you really need to kind of detail what's going on in there, you can um, put it that into the description that's going on um, right here. Um, so let's let's make a change now. Now that we've made some changes here, let's, let's make some changes to this. Um, this hello.py, I want it to actually do a print hello world at the beginning, whether it's been imported or not. I want that to have happen in there. To just check out and make sure what's going on here, I'm going to do this hello pi. We can see, hey, this actually gets printed out. And we're still running this execution of this, this program that's inside of here. We go back to the GitHub desktop. We can see, hey, there's been changes to this. 
We can see that here, this little icon right here says that it's modified. And if we look at this, we can actually see what changes have been had. So on line two, a line, a line has actually been added and we've added the print hello world that's there. So I'm going to make a commit message and say um, added print statement in here. I'm going to commit to my master and I'm going to push this guy out. Let's go back to our, our um, repository on GitHub and we can see now if we pull this up, our print hello world is there. So that's how you push the changes out to the, to the central repository. But what about, what if there's been changes made to your repository? Well, we can actually edit this in uh, GitHub. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to say, you know what, this really shouldn't be there. And so I'm going to delete this here. And instead, I'm going to enter it in right here. Print hello world. And in reality, this should be um, this. This should be inside of that main commit file. So now I'm going to change this commit um, fixed error with print statement. I'm going to commit the changes. That's there, and now the changes have happened. Let's go to our GitHub desktop. Nothing's changed here. We don't know what's happened. We don't know that things have changed into our repository. Now, over time, GitHub will actually automatically refresh and go out and check to make sure that things are going. But just in case, let's push the fetch origin. And when we do that, we're going to see, hey, something happened. So we're going to pull this guy that's in here. Before I do, I'm going to show you you can see this guy didn't really change. There's nothing, nothing in there. Um, this print statement is still outside. Okay. Now I'm going to do pull origin. And ta-da. There we go. Now, what if we made a change here? I'm going to go into here, do, and move this back out like this. We can see that a change happened here, but I realize, you know what? I haven't committed this file, but I really don't want that to happen. I can right click on this and do discard changes. And what'll happen is it'll actually revert that file back to what it was in the previous commit. And you can see in the background, now that hello world is back in this uh, location right here. So that's a basic overview of how to use GitHub um, and Git in there. Um, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is branching. So this is an additional aspect of version control for software, and it's called branching. And basically what branching does is think of it like a tree, and off of that trunk you have branches. Well, so if you've got software code and it progresses over this, but let's say you want to kind of branch away and do kind of your own thing and start working on some other features or ideas or those types of things. Well, you can branch off of that code and keep going and even implement any changes that have happened into here into yours and then kind of work on that. And then if you decide, you know what, this is really valuable and I want to do that, you can take those changes and merge them back into that main branch that's in there. And so that's what kind of branching does. And, and branching can kind of get complicated. You can have a branch that comes off of this, and then a branch that comes off of this, and then a branch that comes off of this. Um, if you want to learn more kind of about uh, Git, GitHub, um, I actually really, um, really appreciate the uh, Atlassian um, uh, Git tutorial that's in here. I think they do a really good job. Um, about talking about Git. Um, and, and there's a lot of, of things in here. So if you just go to atlassian.com slash git slash tutorials, there's a lot of information that kind of can you can use. And for beginner, there's this, what is version control and the different types of things in here. What I wanna show you is this graphical
right must be the next one right here here we go so you can see here's code as it traverses traverses over time and they've branched away and they've made changes into here and then they can merge these changes back into the main branch that's in there um, and, and there's lots of other different kind of, of um, options in here and you can kind of see here's all the different uh, things that are in there so that's the basics of, of what branching is and this is actually the conclusion of, of our module we've we've learned a lot today we've learned about um, what exactly is a programmer we learned what the basics of uh, a computing pro, um, components are um, we've learned about what software life cycles are we've created our first Python script and then finally, we've learned about what configuration management is and how it's important and, and worthwhile to, to do in this. Um, I'm really glad that you guys have decided to, to join me in this class and, and I look forward to learning more about Python with you as we, as we go along.